Hey everybody. So um, I, uh, I've been working on some hills for uh, for my tabletop games. Um, I uh, you know I wanted to do something where I could pose things on top of it and then have like I felt like the hills that I had were kind of basic. <laughs> um, but also I wanted these to just fit in in like any kind of setting, you know, whether it's like in a cave uh, for like the Underdark or something, or if it's like a mountaintop or if like Frostgrave, if it's supposed to be covered in snow. So, you know, they're just, uh, they're just rocks. So they pretty much fit in everywhere. So I just did like a, uh, a pretty good, you know, rock paint job and didn't really put any like sand or you know, anything that would identify it as a certain kind of area. Um, but, uh, but yeah, let's make some, uh, some big old hills. So first up, what I'm going to be using is some of this, uh, cork bark stuff. And, um, I got mine at a local, like, lizard shop. Um, but I checked and they, they sell this stuff at Petco. Um, if you go to a Petco, PetSmart doesn't sell it because Petco sells like lizards and they're meant to be for like little lizard homes. Um, but uh, so I'm going to cut cut this in half and uh, and then, you know, have one side be the flat side. And um, I did use my hobby saw thing to cut this, but you don't need a hobby saw. Um, I, uh, I actually put the initial cut in with, um, with just a little, you know, hobby like handsaw, um, and then put it through my little hobby jigsaw thing. <laughs> so, but it's, you don't, you don't need power tools to, to cut it. It's pretty soft. And, um, I, uh, I have a big old box of, um, MDF. You know, I like MDF. I know some people don't like it. So I'm, but uh, I'm gonna use some MDF for my little base. And uh, cutting it kind of close here, I had to, you know, uh, cut the corners a little close in some areas because I wanted to leave a little lip where it looked like some, uh, you know, some like rocks had kind of fallen down around uh, the base to like make a, a little lip of like sand that kind of came up to the rocks. But again, you don't need um, any power tools to do things like this really. Like you could use cereal box or um, chipboard, something like that, uh, to make the little bases for things like this. It just makes them pretty durable. MDF is kind of like an indestructible wood product as far as gaming goes. So while I was waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up, I went around and kind of beveled off the edges um, and you know I am using my hot glue gun to do this I don't know if it's the best tool for this because um, hot glue can uh, like if you're this is the, the the pitfall with hot glue is that it's it by no means permanent like if you stick it in your car and and you have something sitting in your car it can just like melt again so you know just just be be mindful of that like i um made sure to pump it full of lots and lots of glue and there's multiple hot glue sticks in this thing too so uh so yeah hopefully it just stays in one piece for as long as it has a has a life on my uh gaming boards and uh to build some little landforms inside like the bulk of the filler. I'm just using some uh, chunks of styrofoam and uh, this is just some styrofoam that I had from like something that got shipped to me or something like that. Um, but if I was going to do it again, I think I would have used the, uh, the extruded polystyrene stuff, the pink stuff that you see over on the right hand side because that stuff is all one inch thick. Uh, it's a consistent, you know, size and I could make it uh, everything sort of match up with all of my other terrain that I've made out of XPS foam uh, and so initially I was thinking that I was going to use 
the texture of the styrofoam to like make some rocks or something like that. But I ended up covering all that up later with like rock molds and stuff, you know? So yeah, I don't think I would, I would use that again. And to uh, make some little steps, uh, stepping up towards the top, I'm gonna be using some of this uh, heavy cork board stuff. Um, these are actually trivets that I got from uh, Ikea. And they're, it's like a nice thick chunk of cork, um, but they're, uh, they're super cheap at Ikea. It's like three, three giant uh, trivets for $3. You're supposed to put them under your pots or uh, pots and pans and stuff to keep from burning your uh, countertops but they make uh, cool looking little uh, rocks for uh, minis and stuff but uh, I made most of the little steps out of some different little thicknesses of uh, cork bark and then uh, and then I went around after that and uh, started sticking on some of my um, Woodland Scenics rock molds on top of that. And uh, I'll go around and um, break off some little pieces of bark too, and put those in other places to like use those as a gap filler because um, they make nice little boulders too to kind of fill things out. So, uh, so yeah, I'm moving or moving on from the uh, hot glue gun. <laughs> I'm not completely done with it, but I did want to use some some stuff that wasn't a thermoplastic on this thing, you know, like uh, pumped it full of a lot of super glue too. Used a, a good chunk of a, or most of a jar of super glue on this thing. And uh, and then some, uh, some PVA glue too, to seal everything. And uh, I went around and you know, did, did a lot more super glue, <laughs> um, but I'm using um, little kind of like aquarium gravel sized chunks of rock to kind of uh, fill in little gaps too. And just for, you know, aesthetics, just to make it look like there's big boulders and then there's small boulders. And, uh, and then I'm gonna go around and kind of fill in around those with some uh, some like kind of sand filler later uh, to get the look of some uh, you know big natural landforms and to uh, to make a gap filler or just kind of like a, a all around kind of filler this this is something that I started doing that works really well for me um, so I take some some spackle kind of filler like joint compound stuff like drywall filler and uh, and then um, I mix that up and I mix up uh, about one equal part gap filler um, drywall filler one part PVA glue um, like a strong PVA glue um, like I like uh, Eileen's tacky glue it's just a really strong PVA glue and, uh, and then I use um, about an equal part of sand and, uh, and then uh, an equal part of water. And then I just mix all those together and you get a really nice uh, textured filler paste that you can put down and it's totally sealed, you know, when you're, when you're done mixing it up and then you uh, and you put it on top of everything it uh, it will not come up <laughs> and then you don't need to like reseal it it still has that sandy texture but you don't need to like seal it down after you've glued it and then glued it down again you know but I'm gonna put that down just all over everything uh, I want to like fill in any gaps in between the little rocks um, I want to like put it on top of the um, the cork bark in some places like there's some places where it just has a really cool texture um, but then you know there's other places where I want to kind of cover up how it does look because it looks like wood you know it has like that wood grain sticking out 
So this is going to kind of cover up that wood grain texture and then I'm going to put it like on the side of the, the MDF panel to kind of like hide the little lip and uh, just, you know, all over the place, all over anything that I want to disguise, any, anything that I want to add some texture to just to make it look like um, sand and rocks and dirt and stuff. So next I took everything outside and spray painted it. Um, I'm using a, uh, a few chalky kind of finish uh, spray paints. I'm using like a dark kind of slate gray and then a medium gray like from 45 degrees and then a white kind of color directly from above. And uh, I keep trying to do this thing where um, I, uh, I mix up a bunch of colors and uh, I have like a bunch of cheapo like dollar store kind of craft paints um, like uh, Apple Barrel, <laughs> Americana, there's some golden in there too but, uh, but it's mostly uh, cheapo craft paints and uh, so I'm going to do light colors and uh, this has not worked out for me yet. I, I keep experimenting with it. I keep trying to get it to work the way that I want it to, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. So what I do is I water everything down, you know, at least like one-to-one -one water to paint, if not more. And, uh, and then I'm trying to do this like watercolor thing where um, basically I'm going light to dark uh, so I'll start with the, the lighter colors and uh, I just wanted to kind of get some sort of slate, you know, kind of um, different kind of lighter colors, like some, some greens and some, uh, some you know, yellows and uh, things like that sort of mixed in so that everything doesn't look just like a shade of gray. Uh, so I'm trying to put some like uh, different colors in there and then I'm gonna start doing a dark wash all over everything after I've put in those other colors but this for some reason this just never works the way that I want it to and I think it's because I'm just going too light to begin with I think that I need to work from like some kind of a gray scale like a medium gray and then try to do this thing So what I ended up doing instead, because this just never turns out the way that I want it to in my mind, was um, I just go back in with the, uh, the other colors at full strength, you know, just straight out of the pot. And then I kind of do this like uh, dry brush, or not dry brush, like a, a wet blending like overbrush thing with a, um, a, a ripped up piece of uh, um, foam from a blister pack and um, you know if you go to like uh, I don't know like Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels or whatever they have those sponge brushes so you can take like one of those and kind of rip it up and then make a like a, a texture brush so I think that's what I'm gonna do next time I'm at the uh, the uh, hobby you know craft paint store is I'm gonna get some of those those foam brushes and then rip them up to make like a texture brush. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna come in on top of the uh, the washes, and if it doesn't look dark enough, then I'm gonna redo the the shadows and then just kind of come in on top of that and sort of wet blend like overbrush with the uh, with the sponge to do like a stippling thing uh, to pick up the highlights. So then after everything had dried for a little while, then um, I'm going to come back in with, again, you know, some of those same colors, those lighter colors, and, uh, and then I'm going to uh, dry brush on top of that. But, uh, but this time I'm working dark to light. So I want to put in any of the darker colors, like uh, 
I, I like that green in there. Um, so I'm just going to kind of dry brush around with um, some of the, the darker colors. And this is still like, it's a little bit wet still, which is okay because um, it's going to kind of tone down the chalkiness of the, uh, the look of the dry brush. So, um, you know, like dry brush doesn't look bad on stone, you know, it's, it's fine if it's dry, but what if your rocks are a little, you know, moist, like if they're in a cave? But eventually I'm going to work up to uh, that highest uh, highlight last, which is that kind of uh, gray and uh, the sand color. And uh, just remember, you know, when you're dry brushing that you're trying to create highlights. So if you're working on the top of something, kind of work in like little circles. Um, and then if you're, you know, on the side of something, then kind of come down uh, like uh, in the direction that the, the sunlight would be hitting. So one last little thing that I like to do um, before I hit everything with a coat of varnish is I like to put on some uh, some pigments. And uh, before you say like, oh, Steve, like it looks so good before and you just you ruined it, you know, like these colors don't look right at all. The, the thing with the pigments is that they um, when you hit them with a coat of varnish, it dulls them down a ton. Like basically they kind of settle into the recesses and they just, they are not anywhere near as strong after they've been hit with a little bit of varnish. It just really, really dulls them down a lot. But I just wanted to add back in some of those slate colors. But yeah, that's it. That's the uh, finished product. That's how everything looks. Um, and uh, this is, you know, it's supposed to be more of like a um, a centerpiece. You know, uh, if you if you did want to have a tall like line of sight sort of blocking thing, I think it's good for that. Um, but uh, you know, it's kind of a lot of work for just a bunch of little hills. Um, so so that's what I'm going to be doing next is I'm gonna be doing a bunch of um, other little hills that are shorter than these guys and more modular so I can sort of move them around and do different things with them. But, uh, but yeah, I really like these guys and just, you know, I feel like it just fits in in any setting. So really utilitarian for gaming. But uh, yeah, take care of yourselves, you guys, and stay safe and stay healthy and stay sane during all of this crazy bullshit.